first things first make sure that you have your crossover set make sure you have your time alignment set um, you're gonna need mono pink noise uh, you're gonna need your RTA microphone uh, set up by the headrest and um, the next thing you're gonna need is Rue EQ wizard which I'll show you you're gonna need your DSP um, pulled up and the DSP needs to be a para needs to have a parametric equalizer in this case I have helix um, and then you're gonna need this thing called Jazzy's tuning companion which I'm gonna link in the video description what this does is it allows you to put in a house curve and then it will export um, individual house curves for each driver so that we can tune perfectly to those um, the curves based on the crossovers okay I did my own personal one uh, Jazzy's got his, his own in here um, see how it changes I exported mine and my on my main computer upstairs so uh, I already have my text files um, alright so let's get started to begin uh, pull up Rue go to preferences and you're gonna need to uh, set your mic as the input device you're gonna need to um, uh, make sure you set your calibration file for your mic uh, the next thing you're going to need to do is um, go into RTA, make sure you have your um, graph axis limit set up properly. The horizontal will be 15 to 20,000. The vertical is going to depend on how loud your stereo is set. You're going to want to have the pink noise playing at a listening level and then you, once you do your first recording you'll know where you want to set your vertical um, axis limits okay I just got done doing my mid bass so now we are going to focus on um, my mid range and my mid range is pretty shit you're gonna see here uh, and so we're gonna do a lot of fixing so let's start I'm going to go ahead and unmute my right mid-range driver. I'm going to go to RTA and we're going to record it. Uh, by the way, under these settings you're going to want to have everything set exactly like I do right here. So feel free to pause the video and copy it. We are going to record until it has at least a hundred. Um, it's reached at least a hundred on the average count, and then we're going to hit save, mute the channel, and now we're going to click on the EQ tab. You're going to want to copy what I have here. So under equalizer, we're going to be generic, target settings, speaker type none. We're not going to mess with any of this except for the LF rise slope zero. HF false slope zero and the target DB level is going to be based on again how loud your stereo is um, and I usually start with the sub then work my way to the mid bass and then mid range and, uh, and then tweeter so what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that after the sub and the mid range that it's a flat that it's flat so I wanna try and maintain the same decibel level between the speakers so I'm going to go back to my mid bass that I already EQ'd. I'm going to click on the EQ tab and it's going to show that I had EQ'd at 52.7 for the decibel level. So when I go to my mid range, I'm going to do the same, 52.7. Okay. So as you can see, we've got a lot we need to work on. We've got some nasty dips here and then we also want to try and round this out. So, um, after we've done that we need to do our match range and our match range what that's going to do is the uh, it's going to EQ automatically um, and you'll see so I, if I click uh, match sorry uh, first I need to set the match range 
So we want it to follow this curve, right? So I'm going to set it for about 125. And then we the curve ends at around 10K. So I'm going to set it to 10K. And I'm just going to show you what this does, all right? Make sure the individual max boost is 6, overall max boost is 3, and then flatness target is 1. And then narrow allow narrow filters below 200 hertz. That needs to be unchecked. So click match response to target. And now it's going to automatically um, do what it can to fix um, to fix all this. Um, if you click on filters and filters plus target, it's going to show all this stuff. But the the main thing is that it's going to show you predictions based on what it did, or based on um, all these EQ filters. Okay. But what's important is is that you need to realize that you have you only have so many um, of these uh, parametric EQ, EQ bands that you can use. So if we keep getting nitpicky on all this, you're going to run out eventually. All right. So with that being said, the thing I want to address first and foremost are these really nasty dips that we have. So what we can do is we can actually set our own. Um, so I'll show you. You'll click manual. You'll click PK always. And then down here, it's really bad around 200. So I'm going to raise it by 6. And then uh, the Q, I believe, stands for quality. The lower the number, the wider it's going to affect the band. And the higher the number, which the max for my helix is 5, the least it's going to affect the band. Okay, so you can see I put five, and this is what it estim This is what it guesses is going to happen. If I do it to one, then look, it affects it a lot more. Now, the only time that you really want to use a lower Q is when you are working on the outside curves, because if you put them on the inside curves here, it's going to mess with the computer's calculations when it goes to give you um, these EQ filter parameters that you have to enter into your uh, DSP. So I usually only use the lower number of cues when I'm way out here because I know it's going to affect right here a lot or out here it'll affect this a lot and then on the inside I just do the I do a cue of five to really try and get those dips fixed and then the computer will fix the rest for me. Alright so I just raise that up there right here I'm gonna need to raise which is at 390 so I'm going to make sure that that one is set to a Q of 5. 390, 6, 5. And then I'm going to come over here. This is really bad. 1580. Manual. PK. 1580. 6, 5. You can see it raised it way up to where I want it. This one's really bad right here. So 993. Manual PK 993.65. See how it raised that? Right here, I need it to be fixed, which is at about 2000. Six, five. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually enter in the manual ones I just did first, and then I'm going to um, record it again. So let me show you. All right. So we switch it, switch it to parametric EQ. My manual ones start here at 200. So you're just going to enter each one based on what it tells you over here, okay? So 200, the gain is 6 and the Q was 1. I don't know why it just skipped all the way over to band 10. I must have pressed something on accident. Here, I'm going to reset this to 0. Come back over here.
All right, so I just entered in all those manual ones that I did. So we'll close this out. We'll unmute channel D and we'll take the next rating or the next recording, my bad. And again, we're going to let this average up to 100. Save. Mute the channel. All right, and then again, you can go back to the last time you EQ to see what level you had it at 52.7. 52.7. Need to put zero in for each of these again. Okay. All right, so we're looking a little better over here. This part I'm not so concerned about, but I'm definitely concerned about this whole section between here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and let the computer sort that out. All right, so I'm going to set the parameters for that. 528 and 3,220. And now let's just let it fix it. All right, so that's looking a lot better. Let's go ahead and enter all these. Let's see how we did. As you can see, we're looking way better. I still don't like this section right here. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a spike. So 445. Let's do a manual. And then we're good. Let's give this a spike. Well, let's give this a spike. 389. Wish we could do a higher Q. What happens if I get rid of this? How about we make the gain a little less? A little bit more. Alright, looks let's do three. We'll stick with four. All right, and then we need this to still go up. I'm going to go back to the first one I did. It was 200 with a value of one. Let me change this to five and just see what happens. All right, so we entered those two, and then I'm going to add, let's add a spike at like 220. Okay, let's see what happens. So let's add.
All right, still, we're still getting closer. Let's add another spike here, 286, and another spike here, 172. Getting closer. Still not quite where we want to be, but it's still, as you can see, it's still looking nice. I can get really nitpicky. Let's see, 150. Yeah, without adjusting the crossover, I think that's about the best we're going to get. But that looks way, way nicer than it did before. I'll show you before and after here. This was right mid-range before, and look at that, right mid-range after. And we can even add some smoothing to it to show you. So before, after, way nicer. So that's it, guys. That's how you tune. Do this with every single uh, driver, and you'll be good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Otherwise, have a good one.